Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Borie Ekholm, uh, for joining with CNN Indonesia Business. So we're you know talking about the 5G mm -hmm. technologies mm -hmm. that uh, is expected to be commercialized, you know, starting in 2020. How do you see Indonesia as 5G market? Mm -hmm. Thank you. First of all, it's great to be here and, and have a chance to talk to you. Uh, well, we think this is a very exciting market. Uh, we see the um, the ambition to digitalize the Indonesian economy as something very positive mm -hmm. and we think that can benefit also from the 5G environment. Mm -hmm. Of course there is a there is a journey to go through but but if you look at the development over the last five years of Indonesia you just have to be impressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if we talk about you know Indonesian we're not really you know, the most welcome tech nations you know we're, we, we're having still now the issues about the uh, technologies that really actually changes the business here how do you how do you you know solve these problems but i think also when we look at indonesia we actually get impressed mm -hmm. we see a lot of development happening in the local economy uh, where where the adoption of cell technologies and mobility is mm -hmm. actually coming quite rapidly mm -hmm. yes it's still uh, an area where we need to build out 4g but, uh, but we see that as a very strong development and I, I think you know, Indonesia is a big country and it's growing fast and it's going through a lot of reforms to make it even grow faster mm -hmm. and we think it's a very interesting market. Okay, if you talk about technology, you know, it needs infrastructure. How do you develop the 5G infrastructures here? Mm -hmm. No, and, and of course, we're, we're, 5G is one of the big bets for Ericsson. Mm -hmm. We're investing heavily to be a true technology leader in 5G, mm -hmm. uh, bringing that to the market around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see here it's starting to be commercially adopted, call it in 2019, with some sort of, for the first commercial developments. Mm -hmm. Then we see volume coming 2020 and beyond. And we actually think globally there will be, you know, call it a billion subscribers in five years, 2023. Okay. So it's really a, big, a fairly rapid adoption that's going to happen. Okay. What kind of investment, you know, Ericsson, you know, do in several countries for developing mm -hmm. 5G? Mm -hmm. So what we do, we work with partners. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of operators around the world, 40-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, we have university relationships also in the same number of universities. And then we work with enterprises as well, mm -hmm. because we see 5G as a bigger technology than, than, than just another G. It's kind of enabling, call it the industrial internet mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if in terms of investment, do you need to build something, you know, in, mm -hmm. in terms of infrastructure, if you want to have 5G, or mm -hmm. do you just, you know, developing what we're having now? No, you will need to make investments. Mm. But I think it's also important to look at 5G from another way. Mm. If we look at the traffic today in the network, it's growing you know, 50% plus year over year. Basically, the demand for traffic is, is exploding. To cope with that, we believe 5G will be needed. It's a much more spectral efficient technology. It's also more energy efficient technology. Mm -hmm. And it will actually allow our customers, the operators, to lower their operating costs. Okay. So we look at it from a point where it actually creates a lot of value for the industry as well. Okay. Do you have a number? I mean, particularly in investment, you know, particularly in Indonesia, do you have the number, or do you have like certain infrastructure that you will build here in Indonesia? Now, what you see is uh, what we try to do is to. to basically help our customers to go through a path mm -hmm. through 4G into 5G. Okay. And that includes, of course, making the core upgradable to 5G. We need to have the radio, you need to have other business systems, the OSS, the BSS, etc. Mm -hmm. That needs to be adopted. And that's all about the journey. And that's what we help our customers to go through. So we, for example, our baseband and our technology is mm -hmm. already, or the hardware is already prepared for 5G. Mm -hmm. So we can allow our customers just to do a software upgrade and they can carry 5G traffic. So for our customers, it becomes a, a business decision when it's time to switch on 5G, mm -hmm. not about the investment size per se. Okay, you said before about the uh, local 
uh, telco provider in April, Ericsson and Excel as yet they have completed the first mm -hmm. demonstration uh, of 5G in Asia. Does this mean Ericsson will be working together with Excel only or do you still open you know, with other uh, telcos mm -hmm. uh, providers here? Uh, we work with all uh, operators in mm -hmm. the market. So, uh, we will do that going forward also and it becomes more a timing of when we do a test with one versus another. Mm -hmm. So, so that, uh, that was an important test we did to showcase what can be done with 5G in this market. Okay. Uh, but there will be other partnerships also. Okay, what kind of partnership that you would have with uh, all the uh, major telco provider here? Mm. What we do in other markets is we launch test cases. We need to show what are the applications you mm -hmm. can use 5G for. Mm -hmm. So we launched that around the world actually and we're working with some 40 operators around the world. Okay. 2020 is just like four, three years you know, ahead. What is the most critical preparation at the moment for Indonesian government and of, and of course for the uh, telco uh, providers mm. here? Well, uh, first of all, I think it's worth to note that if we look just five years back and, and what has happened in Indonesia over the past, call it five years, mm -hmm. we've seen a dramatic strong development. Yeah. So I'm convinced the government will figure something out here as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, but of course one thing that, that needs to be resolved is to create call it, regulation and spectrum availability that favors 5G. And, and here of course it's, a, it's all about moving as fast as possible to, to create a certainty for the operators so they can pursue investments. Okay. Uh you said about the government because Indonesian Ministry of Communication and Information says the government has actually four main concerns when it comes to 5G implementation like the frequencies and then the regulation and then again the infrastructures, the preparing infrastructure and passive infra infrastructure. Do you have plan to meet the government, Indonesian government to you know, solve all the, uh, all the problems here? As a matter of fact we work together with governments around the world on on these type of issues and have how should one think about spectrum, how should you think about regulation, mm. etc. So here we do that, you know, Indonesia and, and other countries as well. Okay, okay. Uh, when it comes to 5G, what can we do actually with, with 5G that we cannot do with, you know, what we're having now? Mm -hmm. What we get with 5G is a number of, of things actually. One is of course we get higher bandwidth, mm -hmm. so faster speeds basically. Okay. But we also get lower latency and latency is the, the delay for the response and, and this latency it's a little bit hard to, to think about and, and realize what that is but it allows us to put for example a number of capabilities into mm -hmm. the network instead mm -hmm. of in the device. Mm -hmm. So for example if we were to do um, autonomous vehicles for okay. example that would, would if it would be a too much of a delay you could actually not operate an yeah. autonomous vehicle. Mm -hmm. right? But if it's no delay, it becomes truly real time and all of a sudden we can, can have platooning of cars for, or trucks for example. Uh, so we can do a number of different things uh, with 5G. But then it also allows us to, to have devices with much lower uh, battery consumption. Okay. So it can have much longer battery life. And that of course you, you can realize can have a lot of, of different applications could be sensors, could be devices placed out in the, in the street mm -hmm. that does monitoring, uh, traffic conditions could be easier to monitor, uh, cleaning of the street could be easier to monitor, etc. So there are a number of things we can do with 5G that we can't do today. Okay, is it applicable if you see Indonesia with you know, with the traffic and then with the people don't really you know trust the technologies yet you know is it is it safe how do you make sure that this kind of technology is safe for people it's always new technology will always introduce uncertainties mm -hmm. and when the car came first we have to remember the first thing you had to do was to have a human walk in front of the car to yeah. warn everyone <laughs> okay. that there would be coming a car mm -hmm. uh, so i think it's always the same with new technology but the benefit is once you start using it, you get used to the new way of working and all of a sudden it will be adopted. I think that will happen with 5G as it has happened with 4G. Okay. Uh, according to Qualcomm Technologies, the 5G value chains will generate up to 3.5 trillion US dollar in revenue mm. in 2035. How do you see Indonesia you know, can take the uh, opportunities mm. 
out from the uh, 5G technologies? Uh, we have done many studies and, and Qualcomm is one, but we have done a couple of on our own as well mm -hmm. to, to see if we can assess the, the potential market size here. And we think the operator revenues could increase by more than a third. Mm -hmm. So that would be like $6 billion in Indonesia, which is quite sizable mm -hmm. and, and will allow many new applications for example, in smart cities, in, in smart manufacturing, etc. And we think here Indonesia is a very interesting market. Okay, what is Ericsson in a very short time going to do here in Indonesia to develop the 5G? What we do uh, is, uh, first of all, we've been in Indonesia for 110 years mm -hmm. actually. So we've been here quite some time. Uh, we invest for the long term. We will work with our customers to mm -hmm. help them prepare for 5G mm -hmm. and be ready once the technology is there. Mm -hmm. So in the period short of time do you have you know plan maybe to you know test another technologies here with other uh, mobile provider or do you still don't have you know plan for that no we, we we work with all our customers to see when it fits them uh, to actually do tests mm -hmm. and we will continuously do that something we will continue to do in Indonesia as well so mm -hmm. and then it all depends on, on on the priorities of our customers if they have an interest in testing or not. I see. So are you optimistic that Indonesia will be commercialized the 5G in 2020 just like the rest of the world? Or do you have still you know, a little doubt with the you know, government thing and then with the you know, uh, mobile provider here mm. that you know, really you know, hard to adapt with the technologies uh, and the people too, of course? No, but I, I, I think the, the, the reality is that we will see adoption in 2019 in mm -hmm. some countries. Mm -hmm. That will probably be the US, uh, Korea, Japan, China. Mm -hmm. uh, that will start to deploy in, in 2019. After that, we think it will, other countries will follow with relatively high pace. I think given the, still the preparedness here for, for example, as witnessed with e-commerce mm -hmm. in Indonesia, I think Indonesia will be rather early uh, and on the forefront. Uh, and we, we see quite a lot of increasing in interest in the Indonesian market for 5G. Okay, talking about e-commerce, it's a big thing now in Indonesia. There are a lot of startups now that are growing in uh, Indonesia. Uh, how can you say to the, uh, especially to the small enterprises here for the uh, early startups to really take advantage out of the 5G technologies? Now 5G, I, I think the key here is to understand that 5G gives many more capabilities that we today, we can only speculate about the use cases. Mm -hmm. And one is, for example, we had autonomous driving. We can have smart drone technology, for, mm -hmm. for example, surveillance. Mm -hmm. uh, you can imagine to have uh, e-health care done where you do remote examinations, maybe not remote surgery yet, but yeah at least remote ex examinations, you can do a number of things. So it's actually only your own imagination that probably creates the limit of what can be done here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important in an economy like Indonesia that we have the entrepreneurs out here that start to say, how can I take advantage of the capabilities of 5G? Mm -hmm. Because if you're early on doing that, you can actually create something that's really meaningful. Okay, so thank you so much for your time, Mr. Borje Ekom. Thank you. Thank you.